How are we doing everyone? Hope you're well. Mr. Bold here and I'm back today with a thread response video. I'm responding to Thomas over at the Merciful Mail channel uh, for his thread 10 albums where the opening track is the best song on the album. Uh, if you're not familiar with Thomas's channel, I will as always leave a link to his channel in the description box of this video. Uh, so you can head over to his uh, channel if you're not familiar with it. Watch his videos, subscribe to his channel. He's a great guy, puts out great content. And uh, I really enjoyed this thread when I saw him announce it the other day. So I'm here today with my 10 picks for 10 albums, where the opening track is the best song on the album. We're going to get into it after you know what. So we're kicking off today, going back to 1992, the Buffalo, New York. And here's Cannibal Corpse and their 1992 masterpiece, Tomb of the Mutilated. And the opening track, of course, is Hammer Smashed Face, uh, the song that I was actually in introduced to via Ace Ventura, Pet Detective. Uh, absolutely amazing opening song. Everything comes in all together. Uh, ferocious, frantic stuff. It's fantastic riffs. Jack Owen on the guitar, so of course the riffs are amazing. Things break down for that bass break for Alex Webster's amazing bass playing and great bass tone. Uh, it's fast, frenzied stuff, great riffs, great drums from Paul Mazurkovic as well. Breaks down towards the end uh, with that really, really heavy riff and that massive guttural growl from Chris Barnes. Chris Barnes absolutely knocking it out of the park on this tune uh, with the vocals. Just an absolutely amazing opening track. For me, one of the best opening tracks on any album of all time. I think it's absolutely superb. Brilliant, brilliant stuff. That's my first pick for this video, Cannibal Corpse, Hammer Smashed Face and Too Many Mutilated from 1992. A beast of an opening track. Sticking with America now, but going back over to California, to LA, and his Motley Crue's debut album, Too Fast for Love from 1981. An album with loads of great tunes on it, like Come On and Dance, Piece of Your Action, Take Me to the Top, Starry Eyes, stuff like that. But for me, the best track is the first song, Live Wire. Great opening riff from Mick Mars. Uh, really enjoy the riff. Uh, Tommy Lee's kick drums, which are going uh, throughout, really sort of helped carry the song along nicely. Great vocals from Vince Neil, back when Vince sounded great. Um, massive chorus, very, very catchy stuff. Some great screams from Vince as well. And just a great tune. Really, really high octane, high energy, great stuff. An album with loads of great tunes on it, but for me, Live Wire, the opening track from Motley's debut, Too Fast for Love, is the best track on it. Superb stuff, excellent stuff, really enjoy that one. That's my number two pick. Number three, sticking with the States, but going down to Florida now. For my favourite death album, Symbolic, from 1995. And of course, the opening track is the title track, Symbolic. Uh, just an amazing record from start to finish. So many great tunes, like Zero Tolerance, Sacred Serenity, 1000 Nights, Without Judgment, Crystal Mountain, Misanthrope, Perennial Quest. But for me, the opening track, Symbolic, the title track is just the best on the album. And it's up against a pretty stiff competition. An absolutely amazing track. Starts off with quite a simplistic riff as far as death's concerned. But very catchy, very hooky. Some great riffs throughout the entire track. Great vocals from Chuck. Um, I love the chorus. When he sings symbolic acts and then the, um, the delay comes in and it fades out eventually over the other vocals in the, the chorus. It just sounds absolutely outstanding. Amazing guitar solos, of course. Great drums from Gene Hoglan. Uh, a perfect record from start to finish, no doubt about it. But Symbolic, the title track from Death's Masterpiece from 1995 is my favourite song on the album. Absolutely amazing stuff. Death, Symbolic, from the album Symbolic. Brilliant, brilliant tune. Um, so 1987 now, and an absolutely huge album from David Coverdown Company. Here's White Snake's 1987. Um, an album with some great tunes on it, like Bad Boys, Give Me All Your Love, uh, absolutely amazing songs, but for me, the opening track, Still of the Night, best song on the album, uh, just absolutely fantastic. The combination of David Coverdale and John Sykes was a winning formula, and it's a shame that those egos couldn't keep themselves in check, and they, he could have stayed in the band for longer, but he was in literally for the recording and then gone. Uh, no disrespect to anyone else, but for me, John Sykes is the star of the show here. Whether that be guitar tone, uh, rhythm guitar parts, or leads, um, his playing on this song is absolutely fantastic. The opening riff, or the main riff I should say, is just an absolute beast. 
very very catchy stuff um the solo is fantastic a nice breakdown in the middle uh with the synthesizers coming as well adds a nice atmosphere to the tune huge solo from john sykes and it has to be said david covered out absolutely knocking it out of the park with the vocals just fantastic stuff amazing vocals throughout the entire tune sykes's guitar playing is beastly and the rhythm section of Ainsley Dunbar and Neil Murray, absolutely fantastic. Um, a massively polishedly produced album. And still of the night, the opener is an absolute beast as far as I'm concerned. A brilliant, brilliant track. The first song from White Snake's 1987, Still of the Night, an absolutely huge tune. I really, really love that. It's such a great track. Uh, on some speed mail here, and here's Skeptics of Pollux, of Politics. Of Pol Apocalypse finally spat it out from Aging Steel from 1985. And uh, I came kind of cheating a little bit here because uh, the track I'm talking about is the second song, but the first song is only an instrumental, which is only about 40 seconds long, so not really an opening track. But uh, the first proper track on this album is Agents of Steel, and it's just absolutely superb. Um, really like the drum intro, and in comes everything else, some great riffs. Uh, throughout the entire track, the solo is fantastic as well, but the star of the show is John Cyrus, of course, on the vocals, whose high vocals make Rob Halford sound tame, and that's not easy to do. But yeah, the verses in this track are really good. A lot of the vocal patterns in the verses that um, go alongside with the riffs sound really good. The chorus is an absolute banger, though, when Cyrus is singing Agents of Steel, and then uh, he goes up in the register. Just sounds phenomenal. Fast, frantic stuff, um, excellent solos, and then just when you think Cyrus can't sing any higher, at the end he hits such an insanely high, high note, it's almost uh, hard to imagine how anyone can do that. Uh, just absolutely brilliant tune from start to finish, whether that's drums or guitars, but Cyrus is the star of the show here. Massive chorus, great tune, absolutely excellent stuff. Uh, Ages of Steel from Skeptic's Apocalypse. Uh, it's an absolute beast and uh, my favourite song on this album, no doubt about it. Opening track's a beast. Loads of great tunes on it as well. You've got stuff in there like Taken by Force, which is great. Children of the Sun as well. Bleed for the Gods. But Agents of Steel is my favourite. Excellent track. We're going to go over to Seattle now. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you'll know how much I love this band and this album. There's Alice in Chains' is Dirt, um, absolutely huge album. There are so many great songs on this album. Um, we're talking about stuff like Down That River, Rooster, Sick Man, Down in a Hole, Dirt, um, Angry Chair, Wood. But for me, the opening track, Them Bones, is my favourite, no doubt about it. Um, everything comes in all together. Some nice vocals from Lane Staley where it sounds like he walked into the vocal booth and stubbed his toe and they just end up recording him. Anyway, when he's going, ah, it just sounds great. Um, fantastic tune, uh, massive chorus. The harmonised vocals from Jerry and Lane Staley, absolutely amazing. Great riffs, nice solo. The only criticism in this song is only just over two and a half minutes long. I would like to hear at least another couple of minutes on this tune. Absolutely fantastic. Then Bones from Alice in Chains, second album, Dirt from 1992. Is my favourite. Hard to pick a favourite because there's so many great tunes on this, but Them Bones from Dirt, an absolute beast. First song of the album, brilliant stuff. Absolutely love it. There's some death metal here. And here's Dying Fetus and Descend Into Depravity and the opening track, Your Treachery Will Die With You. It's just technical death metal masterpiece as far as I'm concerned. Um, so many time changes throughout the song. Riffs changing here, there and everywhere. John Gallagher's guitar work is amazing. Solos on this are brilliant. The riffs are fantastic. The co-vocals between John Gallagher and Sean Beasley are absolutely amazing. Um, Trey Williams on the drums, absolutely knocking out of the park. These three are absolutely top-notch musicians. And it's just an absolutely fantastic album. But the opening, Your Treachery Will Die With You, is just such a fantastic song. I remember discovering it on YouTube and just watching that video over and over again. Um... Very, very talented guys. Uh, great riffs, superb drums. I love the co-vocals that like I've just said between the two front men. Amazing stuff. Um, excellent technical death metal. Dying Fetus is your treachery will die with you. It's an absolute beast of an opening track. Brilliant, brilliant stuff. Back to some glam metal now. And here's Dokken's Under Lock and Key from 1985. Their third full-length album. 
Some great tunes on this, especially It's Not Love. The track that opens up side B is excellent. Uh, the Hunter on here is excellent as well. In My Dream, Slipping Away, Till the Living End, stuff like that. But the opening track, um, Unchained the Night, is without a doubt my favourite. I was actually introduced to the track via the live album, Beast from the East. And then I picked up this afterwards, and just an amazing tune. Uh, George Lynch on the guitar. Again, a bit like John Sykes, whether it's tone, riffs or solos, that guy absolutely knows what he's doing. Fantastic fretwork from George Lynch here. Mick Brown and um, Jeff Pilson holding things together nicely in the rhythm section. And Don Dockham with some great vocals as well. Uh, love the vocal patterns in the verses. They're really, really good. Slide alongside the guitar riffs nicely. And an absolute monster chorus as well. Don sounding great in the chorus with the vocals. And an absolutely amazing guitar solo from George. Just an absolutely brilliant way to kick off this album. Um, it's close between this and It's Not Love for me, but Unchained the Night definitely comes in out. Uh, on the top spot, has to be said, brilliant tune, absolutely love it. Dockin's Unchained the Night from Unlock and Keith, 1985. Amazing opening track. Uh, two left to show. And here's Immortals Damned in Black from 2000, and the opening track on this is Triumph. Um, one of the first Immortal albums I've got, and I absolutely love this. People don't talk about it too much, probably because it's quite uh, slickly produced and a lot of people prefer the uh, earlier raw stuff like Battles in the North and Blizzard Beasts. But uh, Damn It Black's an album I've always enjoyed. Rough and Brave track two is superb. Uh, My Dimension's great. Uh, the title track Damn It Black is amazing, but the opening track Triumph is my favourite. A uh, very atmospheric intro before Hogg's drums come in with that snare roll. And then that massive riff from Abbott comes in and everything starts to come in all together at once. And it's just blasting away, fast and ferocious. Fantastic stuff. Uh, gets a little bit slower in the middle with some nice changes in the riffs and the drum patterns. A track packed full of amazing riffs. Love Abbott's vocals. The chorus is fantastic. An absolutely huge tune. Triumph from Immortals Down in Black. It's up against some pretty stiff competition because, like I said, there's some beastly tunes on this record. But for me, the Open of Triumph is definitely the best. Amazing stuff. And I'm all that doesn't get talked about enough. But yeah, Triumph from uh, Damned in Black, absolute beast. And one more record to show. Fantastic band. One of the best bands out there. And the musicianship of these guys is absolutely superb. And we're going to finish off with Mastodon and Blood and Thunder from Leviathan. And I cannot remember what year this came out. Doesn't matter anyway. We're here to talk about the opening track, which is Blood and Thunder. Uh, an album with loads of great songs on it, but Blood and Thunder for me is a track that always sticks out in my memory. And I didn't need to think too hard about this. Uh, nice intro riff from Bill Keeler. His work alongside Brent Hines is amazing. Uh, Brand Daler doing drum uh, feels left, right and centre. Some great feels. Troy Sanders on the bass and the vocals. Absolutely love the vocals in his tune. Troy sounds great. Uh, a lot of the lyrics as well, particularly the opening line. Uh, just fantastic work all around. The fretwork on the guitars is outstanding. Brand doing an absolutely amazing job on the drums. So many drum feels. And just a tune that I never ever tire of listening to. Um, I've heard it so much I probably should be bored of it by now, but I'm just not. The opening track from Leviathan, Blood and Thunder, is an absolute beast. Very, very catchy stuff. Great guitar work. Vocals are superb from Troy Sanders. Uh, yeah, it's just absolutely amazing. Uh, a fantastic album. Um, I love loads of the songs, but Blood and Thunder, for me, is definitely my number one pick. Uh, absolutely a huge opening track from Mastodon's Leviathan, Blood and Thunder. Superb stuff. Right guys, so there we go. That's that video done and dusted. Uh, 10 albums where I prefer the opening track to anything else on the, the album. Let me know what you think about the albums I picked here. Feel free to drop your 10 opening tracks in the comment section of this video. As always, it's always great chatting with you guys. Um, I should be back with you soon. So until next time, as always, thank you very much for watching. And uh, cheers, take care, and I'll see you later.